stop that plane from leaving. What are you going to do? I don't know yet. You get the car. It's hidden in the trees near the entrance. The keys are on the dash. Okay. Keep the engine running. We need to leave as soon as I get the girl. Jack. Yes? Be careful. There's no time to be careful. Not this time. Greta, go! Dannazione. It's too late. It looks like you're too late, Del Nero. What are you doing here? Why aren't you on that plane? I hate traveling. I'm not the kind of guy who crosses the desert on a camel. I prefer the comfort of the big city. Moreover, had I left, I would have missed the chance to deal with you. You made me look ridiculous in the eyes of the organization, and I don't have any intention of letting you get away with it. And what do you want to do? Kill me? I can see it on your face that you've never shot anyone. You're not that kind of guy. You send your men to do your dirty work. You're right. I've never shot anyone. Even though many men and women died because I ordered it. How brave. But you know, there's a first time for everything. It was destiny, Del Nero. It had to be a little past four in the afternoon. I had just lit one of the many cigarettes that fill my days with no clients when a middle-aged guy comes into my office with two caterpillars for eyebrows and a cigar hanging from his mouth. He introduces himself as Harvey Weber, the owner of Weber Company, a meat house in Larchmont. After ten minutes of pointless chatter about his job, he gives me a photograph. Susan Weber, 20 years old, Harvey's stepdaughter. He tells me all about her carefree lifestyle, her dreams of becoming an actress, and how she hasn't come home in weeks, but how he keeps getting bills for clothes, shoes, and other things that might catch the eye of a 20-year-old girl with a well-catch-the-eye of a 20-year-old girl with a well-heeled old man. Harvey, because of his divorce agreement with his ex-wife, is responsible for supporting the girl until she turns 21. So the kid decides to take advantage of her old man while she can and spend as much as possible until she turns 21. But Harvey Weber isn't one to sit on his hands, and he got his attorneys on the case. They think that if Susan were caught having an affair that her old man wouldn't know of, it could bring the evidence to court and get her cut off. Just one photograph would do it, according to Harvey. I take the job. I'll get him that photograph. The whole thing will cost him 30 bucks a day, plus expenses, paid in advance. Harvey gives me a check for 30 bucks and leaves my office. I cash the check, toss down something that can be called a dinner, and I'm already in Harlem. A few dollars got me a tip that Harvey Weber's kid might be around here, at the Last Heaven Hotel, to be precise. According to the information that I have, a few days ago, some blondie went on a shopping spree here in Harlem. In this neighborhood, if you have money to spend on clothes and jewelry, it's easy to get noticed. I even managed to find out that the girl was seen entering the Last Heaven Hotel. I'd better ask a few questions. Last Heaven Hotel, a curious name for a hotel in Harlem. From the information that I got, this is where Harvey Weber's stepdaughter is. No, it doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. Sitting down and reading the newspaper. I should have been a reception clerk. I would have certainly been healthier.
Hi, do you own this place? Well, depends on who wants to know. I'm a private detective. A private detective? I guess someone has gotten himself in trouble. More or less, it's about a girl. A girl, you say? There are a lot of them here, and for a few bucks, they can give you a night that will stay in your memories for a long, long time. She's not a prostitute. Susan Weber, white, medium frame, blonde hair, 20 years, and pretty enough to cause her some troubles. Have you seen her? Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not used to giving out information about my guests to the first person who happens by. People come here to have a place where no one can find them, and not just for a place where to sleep. And I try to help them with that as much as I can. Come on, don't make a fuss. Tell me where I can find Ms. Weber. Sorry, but you won't get anywhere by being pushy. You must have a good imagination to call this hotel Last Heaven. No fantasies or sentimentalities. They're not for me. At least not anymore. This hotel belonged to my brother, Louis Fitzgerald Heaven. There were nine of us, and he was the youngest. And that's why people called him the Last Heaven. When he bought the hotel, he didn't have any doubts about what to call it. At that time, this place was falling apart, but Louis was sure he could turn it into a good hotel, and he made it. How come it's you running it now? My brother can't take care of it anymore. In October 1926, some redneck who missed the good old days of slavery refused to pay his three-day rent for the room. He said that he would have never given money to a Negro. And when my brother threatened to call the police, the guy pulled out a gun and pulled the trigger. Shot him in the guts. My brother died almost immediately. Even though he was small, he never let anyone to push him around. And what we all thought of as a quality eventually turned out to be what killed him. Now, the hotel stayed closed for years, and it was I who reopened it five years later, but without my brother, it wasn't the same hotel anymore. Did the police get the killer? Oh, you already know the answer. One day, great men will be able to change how things are, and there won't be any more hatred between blacks and whites. Nowadays, they name streets in New York after these great men, and when that happens, it means they didn't meet with a happy ending. <laughs>